of the EU observers reporting that uh, uh, in a report that uh, 12 countries are at risk of new economic crisis in the EU. Uh, here's what the story says. A first report by the EU Commission looking at macroeconomic data across the block up until 2010 warns that 12 countries, including Italy and Spain, are at risk of new crises uh, due to their public debt and lack of competitiveness. Part of legislation strengthening economic surveillance, the Alert Mechanism Report, published on Tuesday, which is February the 14th, singles out Belgium, Bulgaria, Cyprus, Denmark, Finland, France, Italy, Hungar Hungary, uh, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, and the UK as uh, in the need of for further in-depth scrutiny of their macroeconomic policies. If it turns out that imbalances exist and that they are harmful, this new tool is a meaningful step towards correcting the imbalances which uh, built up over the year, which has been built up over the years. Sound financial policies and early detection and correction of risky economic imbalances are necessary conditions to return to sustainable growth and jobs. EU Economic Affairs Commissioner Olli Rehn said, German uh, Green MEP Schneib Geingold says the Commission is turning a blind eye to the surplus countries. One of the main reasons for the continued difficulties in the Eurozone are the imbalances between core and peripheral countries. You can't stabilize the Eurozone unless deficit and surplus countries are moving towards each other, he wrote on his website. I have to agree with Mr. Gangold. I believe that uh, one of the main problems with the EU is that uh, too many countries are uh, at different levels. You have, as, as you've said, you have the core countries, which are the stronger countries of the EU, and then you have the surplus countries on the, uh, that are out on the peripheral who are just barely hanging on to uh, EU membership and are just are uh, uh, frankly unable to uh, be competitive uh, in the European Union. I believe it's only a matter of time before uh, the European Union uh, either breaks off uh, and uh, splits from a uh, to surplus countries and core countries, where the core countries will break off into uh, a lesser, stronger uh, EU. Uh, I believe this will probably culminate in what will be the future kingdom of the Antichrist. And uh, one of the things that I've always said would bring in uh, the Antichrist is a crisis of this nature that will grip the EU and he will rise up uh, to bring stability and economic uh, prosperity back to his kingdom. In fact, I don't think it'll just stop there, but I believe that his model for success will probably uh, be the model that will bring prosperity back to the global community, and many will uh, take on his ideas for prosperity and for economic growth. And through his deceptions, he will uh, bring about uh, a false sense of security that will lull the... Uh, uh, world economic community into a sense of false security. At the point of the rapture of the church, the world will fall into a deep panic, not only uh, socially but economically as well. World leaders from around the world will literally be out of answers in how to fix this roller coaster uh, global economy. I believe they will look to the United States for answers, but the United States will have nothing to offer. It is at this time that I believe the Antichrist will take uh, full control, and it will be through his policies and procedures that uh, he will bring back stability and economic prosperity to the world. But I believe first uh, it will start with a serious uh, economic implosion of the European Union and an eventual split. Of course, this is speculation on my part, but uh, I do believe that this very well could be what brings about uh, uh, the success of the Antichrist early on following the rapture of the church. I should say one of his successes. Uh, he will also, his claim to fame will basically be that he will bring peace to the Middle East, uh, in which Israel will be a part of that peace agreement. 
In other news, of course, we know about Iran's continued uh, quest toward a nuclear weapon, but uh, there's also concerns now at uh, mounting in Israel that uh, over the possibility that Syria will attack Israel as pressure mounts on President Bashar Assad to step down. The move is seen as part of a potential effort by Damascus to deter Arab countries from dispatching military support to opposition forces. The concern is still under the surface, but the IDF's Northern Command has drawn up a number of operational responses to a range of scenarios that could evolve along the Northern Front. Nevertheless, Israel fears that Assad, under pressure, could turn the military force that uh, he has been using in an attempt to quell the ongoing uprising against his regime against Israel. That is likely why the IDF spokesman's office sent out pictures uh, taken on Tuesday of OC Northern Command Major General Yari Gohan and Commander of the Northern Corps Major General Gershon Hakon touring Mount he uh, Hermon and looking toward Syria, showing that the IDF is preparing for attacks along the border. Israel's concern hones in on recent reports that Assad is using nerve gas against the opposition. This has led Israel to reassess the possibility that Syria might now be more willing to use chemical weapons against Israeli targets. Syria is believed to have one of the most extensive chemical weapon arsenals in the world that reportedly includes sarin, VX, and nerve gas. Israel is also cons uh, considering the possibility that Syria's arsenal of chemical weapons will fall into terrorist hands. Of course, hearing this report brings to mind the uh, ancient prophecy in Isaiah 17, one that states that uh, one day that Damascus would become a ruin ruinous heap and would be completely destroyed. It doesn't necessarily say who will destroy uh, this great city, but uh, uh, it's, we're beginning to believe that uh, Israel very well may be the nation God uses in order to destroy this great city. In other related developments, here's a news article from Reuters I never thought I would uh, ever read. and says that experts say Iran has neutralized the Stuxnet virus. Uh, the article says the malicious code whose precise origin and uh, authorship remain unconfirmed made its way uh, as early as 2009 into equipment controlling centrifuges Iran is using to enrich uranium dealing a significant but perhaps temporary setback to Iran's uh, sp suspected nuclear weapons work. Many experts believe that Israel, possibly with assistance from the United States, was responsible for creating and deploying Stuxnet. But no authoritative account of who invented the Stuxnet or how it got into Iran's centrifuge control equipment has surfaced. U.S. and European officials who insisted on anonymity when discussing a highly sensitive subject said their government's experts agreed that the Iranians had succeeded in disabling Stuxnet and getting it out of their machinery. The officials declined to provide any details on how their governments verified that the Iranians had ultimately defeated the virus. It was not clear when it occurred, but secrecy on the subject has been so tight that news is only now emerging. Some officials said they believe that the Iranians were helped in their efforts by Western cybersecurity experts whose detailed technical analysis of Stuxnet's computer code have circulated widely on the Internet. For years, many in the intelligent world believe that Israel has been responsible and has been in an ongoing cyber war uh, against Iran's uh, nuclear ambitions. Uh, this is a big blow toward that effort to uh, stop Iran from achieving nuclear status. This is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.